Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to put the tripod plate on the high speed camera. Typically, Dr. Lowe has, I have it here for her where the tripod plate is on the 60 camera just to make it easier for her to use so she doesn't have to switch it back and forth. But if you're gonna use the high speed camera, you're gonna most likely have to put the tripod plate on the high speed camera so that way you can put it on the tripod. So we're gonna show you how to do that right now. Okay, so here's the tripod plate and here's the 60 camera. You're gonna most likely find this in this configuration. Now the way you take the tripod plate off the 60 camera is you take a key and you take the blunt end of the key here, you put it in this slot and you twist it out. Once you get that out, then you start using your fingers and twist it till it comes all the way out. So now we have to put the tripod plate onto the high speed camera. And when you do this, there's this little slot here that you're gonna to wanna to put it in. And then that goes into here right here. So uh, you're gonna want the teeth of the camera. These are the teeth of the tripod plate. You're gonna want them facing wherever the camera's gonna be pointing. So if your camera's pointed this way because the lens goes here, you want the teeth pointing the same direction. So then to do that, you simply screw it in with your hand at first. And of course, make sure that it's on there nice and flush like that. So that way your camera's not pointing one way and it's on the tripod another way. So try to make it as flush as possible with uh, the direction that the lens is gonna be pointing. And then just like we took it off last time, we're gonna put it on the same way. So make sure it's nice and tight. Take a key where this little slot is and then go ahead and tighten it decently. And now just make sure that that's not going anywhere and you're good to go. Now the next thing, we're gonna show you how to put the lens on this high-speed camera. So the next step is gonna be taking the lens off the 6K camera, taking the adapter off of it, putting this adapter on here, and putting it on the high-speed camera. Now the lens is the same lens for the 6K camera and for the high-speed camera, but they need different adapters to be connected to those cameras. So if you look here at the 6K camera, we're gonna have to take it off and be very careful. As soon as you take the lens off, make sure to have this cap handy and ready so that when you cover this, make sure no dust, dirt, or debris gets on the sensor. So to take this off, you push this big black button here and then you rotate it, pop just, it off. Just one push. Just one push, yeah, you push it, rotates right off. Don't force anything, you shouldn't ever force anything. Then you line up the red dot here with the red dot here put it there and you should hear it click. Now this is nice and sealed and protected. That goes back in the box very carefully. Here also be careful with this glass right here. And then this part's a little tricky. So you're gonna actually push down on this little lever here. And when then you push down that lever, you're gonna twist it and rotate it. Which lever? This like a little oh, lever yeah, right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so when you push down the lever, you're gonna rotate it Typically, it's righty tidy lefty loosey. This is the opposite. So when you push down the lever, you do righty loosey. So you, you twist it to the right, and it comes right off. Yeah, this, you sort of put this side to this side, and you gently put it on. Now, it's not going to fit perfectly, and you just have to rotate it so you get it to fit in. So try, just try to figure out where that is, where it fits in nicely. Okay, so it just fell into place. Now, you're going to rotate it. Again, it's opposite. Usually it's righty tidy, lefty loosey. Here it's the opposite. So I'm gonna rotate it like uh, to the left till you hear it click. Now it's on there good. And you can feel it. It's on there pretty good. Okay? So now we're gonna make sure we put this in a place where we're not gonna lose it. And we're gonna put this lens on the high speed camera. So this is the cap that protects the camera sensor on the high speed camera. Don't lose it because that would be very bad. Go ahead and take this cap off. Put it in a place where you know it is. And then, here we go, we're gonna screw this in nice and regular. This one is a little tricky. It's tough to get it to screw in. Uh, it's tough to figure out how the threading goes. But you just kinda keep playing with it and eventually it screws in. You wanna make sure it's nice and snug, but you know, don't break anything. So now, check it. It's on there perfect. So now we've successfully put the tripod plate and the lens on the high speed camera. Now let's go ahead and mount it onto the tripod just so you can see. We want to make sure that this lever is pulled to the right. 
right? So if you come around this way, it's pulled to the right. Sometimes it'll get stuck to the left, just move it to the right or else the tripod plate won't go into it. So you see how the teeth are here? You wanna line up those teeth with these teeth here, put those like that, and it should lock in place. Wiggle this a little bit. And now you're all locked in place. Everything is nice and locked in place. Okay, so now we're gonna mount this cube light onto the light stand. So here, all you have to do is very simple. There's this bolt here that you unscrew with this washer here. Make sure to take them both. So now you have a slot here on this handle that the bolt fits into. So you put the bolt in that slot here and then you can place it over this hole and then thread it in. There we go. Now the light is fixed to the light stand and you can rotate it and you can move it how you'd like. You can lift the stand, lower the stand, anything you need. Now the way it works is you plug this in. There's no on or off button. All you have to do is plug in this right here, this blue part into here, and then you rotate it to the right. When you hear the click, it will be on when it's plugged in. So now this is how you adjust the settings. So you could cycle through some of the different settings that you have here. Um, here's the worm setting. So you can click no and then it'll move to the, it'll move to this setting, then it'll move to the cool setting. So then the worm setting, you can click OK, and you can see the highest brightness is 255. You can lower it if you'd like, or you can raise it. So that's how you do that, and then you click Menu again, click it again, and it'll move to this setting. And then you could adjust it, click OK, and then you cycle through. Last thing to the Cool setting, you can click OK, and you can mess with that Cool setting, so you could raise it. Okay, so these two cables are gonna be very important. Um, these two plug into the high-speed camera, this one is for the power, this one is to see the image on the computer. Where do we keep it? We keep it in the box where the high-speed camera goes. That white fast tech box, it always stays in there. So, go ahead. So that, that camera was inside there? Yes. When I showed you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this cable goes into this slot right here. And then if you go to the computer, It goes into this slot right here. So that pushes down. And it clips right into there. Then you're gonna to wanna to take this, and this is the power supply, and it goes into that right there. So when you plug everything in, you're gonna to wanna to give it one minute so that way everything gets up and running and up to speed before you even uh, open the fast tech software on the computer. So when you open up the fast tech software you go to window and you open up found cameras and then that camera should be here now if you can't find that camera here you have a couple different options i would recommend unplugging everything uh turning off the camera unplugging this black cable here from here and then replugging everything in and then trying again um or you can start the whole computer over but sometimes you won't see that here unfortunately and you have to reboot everything but luckily we see it Okay, when you double click on here up here, it should pop up with this window, and then you go to record settings, and you have all the settings that you want to use to record there. Now, the ones that are the most important to keep in mind are these width and height, right? So the maximum width and height or resolution is 800 by 600. Now, remember when you do that, your highest frame rate is 993 frames per second. And it, you start here to try to get an idea of where you are in space, right? If you try to start too close, you have no idea what you're looking at. So you wanna start by 800 and 600 so you can see where you are in space. And then little by little, you would zoom this in. So it's magnification of the camera. Right, exactly, it's how zoomed in it's gonna be. And then little by little, you would zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. And then notice how that when you go this low, this is around where we were for UST, a little lower. Uh, the frame rate jumps up, so you could do a lot more frames per second. So then instead of 993, we could do uh, over 4,000 frames per second. So you could kind of play with the width, height, and the frames per second. 
And then lastly, the most important thing is the shutter speed, right? If you're filming something and it looks a little bit blurry, it could be out of focus, but even if you're like, no, I promise it's in focus, well, then your shutter speed is not fast enough, right? So the shutter speed here also adjusts how much light gets in. So if you have a really low shutter speed, for UST we did three, and we had the light shining right into the lens of the camera. We had to do that because the shutter speed was so quick. It barely does time for light to get in there. So just be aware that if you do it too low, you can't see anything. It's gonna be pitch black unless the light's shining directly into the camera. And if it's too high, it's gonna be not fast enough, not blur. It's gonna be a little bit on the blurry side. So you just kinda of wanna play with that. So those three settings are the most important to play with. Your width, your height, so it'll show you on the screen exactly what you're looking at, then your frames per second, and lastly, your shutter speed. So last time when I double clicked on front camera, it came up, but it came out grayed out, which was very odd. So that actually doesn't even let you see what the camera is trying to see. So I unplugged everything. I unplugged this, and then I unplugged the power supply to the camera, and I waited a minute. Then I plugged the, camera the power supply into the camera again, and then I waited one minute or two minutes, and then I plugged this back in, and then I opened up this fast tech software again. And then I went through the whole process of going to window, found cameras, double clicking on this, and this came up and it should be blacked out here, which is good, that's a good sign. So now let's open this all the way up to 600 by 800, so that way we have an idea of where we are. Of course, never forget to take off your cap. Then we're gonna turn on the light source. I have the, lots of the light source pointing directly into the camera. Just make it easier for us today to learn. So now we have this um, where we want it. We can see things, we can see what's going on. Now we just have to know where we are. So we're 600 by 800, which is good. Uh, the frame rate is as high as possible. And then the shutter speed, we could go a little lower. Notice how when we go lower, it gets darker, the shutter speed. So then if you go higher, it gets brighter. It's almost too bright. So then you can adjust that. But of course, we need to be able to focus it and adjust some things on the camera itself. And one of the things on the camera itself is something called the aperture. So this right here is called the aperture and it, it um, modulates how much light gets in. So you can see here, as I'm turning the aperture, less and less light will get in or more and more light will get in. So I'm gonna have the aperture all the way open here. And then of course, this is the focus. So right here, as I move it, it'll change the focus. So you can see how it's changing it here. So now we have to figure out exactly where we are and then focus on that. So we now focused it. So you can see how I, as I change the focus, this will change as well. So if it's too bright, it might just be that, well, you're not in focus. So then you wanna put it in focus as best you can. And then of course your aperture, if you make it too low, uh, then you won't be able to see the particles. And if you make it too bright, then you won't be able to see the particles. They kind of bleed the particles out. So you want a nice, happy medium where you can see both particles, the light behind it, and then of course, the ruler that you're gonna tape onto your light source. So this is all an optimization process that has to happen quickly between the focus, the aperture, your width and height of your frame, your frames per second, and then of course your shutter speed. So you focus on all of that to try to get the best, most optimal parameters so you can see the particles the best. So now that we have everything dialed in, I moved the width and height around to what I believe is great. We maxed out the frame rate for this resolution. And then of course the shutter speed, you could always adjust it, make it less, make it more. And of course the shutter, the shutter speed works in unison with the aperture. So if I lower the shutter speed, I might have to open up the aperture a little bit more just to see what's going on. So if I open up the aperture all the way, I can make the shutter speed extremely low. And then even then I might have still aperture left to bring down. And then of course you could adjust the focus. So everything is an optimization parameter. And then you just try to find the perfect harmony between all the parameters. Then when you wanna to go to actually record and film it, you press this green button right here. It should turn like a yellowish orange. And down here, it lets you know how much time you have left of your filming. Then when you're done, Which you, one? this bar right here, oh, okay. will tell you how much time you have left. Then when you're done, you click this, then click yes. And now if you click play, it'll play your video. So this is the video we just took. And of course, let's say you didn't want the whole video, you wanted just a, sec a section of it. You can move this in and move this in 
and now it'll only save that section of the video. And of course, how do you see that part of the video? Well, you move this here, and this tells you where you are in the video. And then when you wanna save it, I usually just click Control S, and this pops up. Um, and then I do AVI, make sure this is on AVI. You want AVI right here, and path is important. So you click here, and then you just place wherever you would like to save it. Right now it's still saved under Nicole's Lek videos. And then you would just click save and it would save your video.